Hey guys, Ultra Maximus official merchandise is now available on my Spring Store. Help support the channel and shop by clicking the link below. Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another comic book review and I want to go over a couple of books that I picked up for Halloween uh, for my local comic carnival down the road uh, on Keystone Avenue here in Indianapolis. So um, I wanted to talk about Marvel Zombies uh, Red, Black, and... Blood, no, Black, White, and Red. Black, White, and Red. I keep mixing that up. And then also... I wanted to talk about the Star Trek Halloween series. Um, that is the Next Generation uh, Holodeck Halloween uh, four-part series. So I went ahead and read uh, both of these actually on Halloween, uh, which was kind of fun. And um, two very different book styles for sure. So uh, first up, let's talk about um, Black, White, and Red, Marvel Zombies love this cover uh this is the cover i went after there were two alternate covers i think do they have the pictures of them in the back uh let's take a look no they do not um the alternate covers were wolverine and then i think the other one was the hulk but this one was i think the coolest and spoiler alert by the way for this entire <laughs> review uh these characters are not in this book um this is actually a pretty good book. This is probably one of the best Marvel books I have read in over a year. And uh, that's not saying much. <laughs> They've been, a lot of them have been really crap. But this particular book is an anthology. So there are three stories in it. Um, you've got Undefeated, Hope, and Deliverance. And this is not the original Marvel zombie stuff. So this is like alternate versions, alternate zombie stories with the Marvel superheroes, which I like. So it's something different and uh, definitely something fun. So the first story, Undefeated, is actually about Daredevil as a zombie. And he is basically, there's a zombie fight ring going on where... They are pitting zombies against each other, and uh, Daredevil is one of the zombies uh, that is fighting. He is the quote-unquote champion, and uh, they keep uh, pitting him against other zombies. And uh, very cool, very fun, and the Punisher actually comes in um, at the end of the little story. And let's see... We see the Punisher. He comes in and basically helps him out. They're even they show some silhouettes of him. He's talking. Um, let's see here. Yeah, they don't even really you don't even really get to see the Punisher. They just they've got him. It's very strange. So he's there, but. He's all whited out. He's just an outline. It's almost like they didn't fill in that artwork. That's very weird. I wonder if they did that on purpose or what. Uh, yeah, so he essentially uses him as a weapon to take out the ring. And yeah, they had to have done it purposely because, yeah, you just don't even see the Punisher. He's like all in white, which is interesting. Um, and, you know, uses him as a, a weapon to take out the the black market zombie fighting ring a very cool story very nice very dark um the second story is called hope and it's basically spider-man um at the daily bugle after a zombie apocalypse uh breaks out and he's trying to save j jonah jameson and um all the other people at the uh, Daily Bugle, but uh, you know they're getting he's getting overrun by zombies. We get a zombie um, Betty Brant, which is pretty cool, and uh, yeah, very cool, very fun. At the end, um, I think this is one of the longer stories. We actually get uh, Zombie Aunt May come in uh, to attack him, 
uh, which is kind of crazy. And um, he ends up taking her out, and uh, basically he realizes that uh, um, he's been infected, and he tells him to run before he turns into a zombie. So, yeah, very cool, very dark. And then the last one is um, Moon Knight, uh, which is very cool. I love and Kanshu there, so very cool. Um, love the look of Moon Knight. Um, basically, uh, oh, who is it? Iron Man connects up with uh, Anubis. He becomes Anubis's uh, little pawn to go after Kanshu's Moon Knight, so they start fighting, all that kind of good jazz. And, um, yeah, very cool, very fun, and essentially, when it breaks down, Moon Knight ends up, it's actually pretty dark, because Moon Knight ends up turning to a zombie himself, and, um, Anubis, essentially, is like, okay, well, I'll just fix you later, you know, I'll, I'll, I, he, he really didn't care if he was alive or a zombie, he just wanted him to do his bidding, which is pretty nuts, pretty crazy, um, Again, great story, very different from the original Marvel zombie storylines, and then uh, we get uh, uh, Daredevil on cover number two for the next issue, um, which is interesting. So we get Electra, looks like Electra coming up out of the grave. So um, interested to pick up the next issue. Highly recommend this one. Um, was very very cool, very very fun, um, dark. There's nothing woke in it. Nothing is like modern Marvel kind of garbage. So great read. If you like the Marvel zombie stuff, I definitely recommend picking this one up. It was worth the money to read, and I'm looking forward to the second issue. Now, the other set of comics that I picked up, like I said, was the Star Trek Halloween set. So this was a four-issue series. I picked up all four issues and read them. And I gotta say, my first impression is they're not good. <laughs> not good at all. They are very bad, badly written. Uh, the artwork is it's pretty sub. I mean, it's basically what you would expect um, in Star Trek comics. You know, I've been reading Star Trek Next Generation comics since, what, the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, this is almost exactly the type of art that you expect out of them. This is like the um, starting level for comic book artists um, or guys that uh, draw backgrounds but can't draw people, so they, and he wants to draw a person or something, and they put him in the, uh, the Star Trek comics just... You're never going to get the best, uh, but uh, essentially, the writer, whoever this guy is, Christopher Sekiro, Sekiro, I, I, I had to go look him up, apparently he's uh, some Australian uh, writer, um, he's bad, he's not good at this at all, um, I mean, and, and when I say bad, the story itself is an interesting idea. However, the writing, the dialogue is terrible. It's rushed. And when I say terrible, it's like all your bases belong to me terrible. I mean, it's just absolutely atrocious. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I can't explain it any better than that. Um, it's just really bad writing. Um, the characters do not sound like the characters on The Next Generation. It doesn't sound like Troy or Riker or Picard or any of them. Data, those types of things. It's essentially, this is essentially a Troy-centric story. Um, so the plot is that Red Jack from the original series uh, comes back and uh, kidnaps some characters and then he ends up taking one of the medical security guards. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Uh, and basically recreates um, Whitechapel, London. And then gets some Borg implants. And uh, puts them in this guy. So he's part Borg, part Jack the Ripper in a kidnapped medical security guy. Uh, Block is his name, and he ends up 
decapitating Data because uh, Data doesn't have any fear. He can't feed off of him, and he ends up turning Data into Frankenstein, essentially. And then he starts to go about all the other uh, crewmen, you know, spreading fear on the Enterprise. Again, it's an interesting concept. So that's basically issue number one. Issue number two, they come up with the idea um, that uh, they're using some kind of therapy from Denab 3. Uh, they're going to go in and um, they decide. They well, I, I do like this. They pull up. A file from Scotty from when he got possessed by Red Jack in the old TOS episode. Um, and uh, they decide they're going to become monsters to battle a monster because monsters aren't afraid of monsters. So they decide, hey, we're going to put everybody under and we're going to transform them into monsters. And then we get the big reveal. They don't know they're monsters because they're in this therapy mode and we got Troy as the mummy, Riker as the wolfman. Um, Worf is basically the creature from the Black Lagoon, but it's a Klingon monster. And then uh, Picard becomes um, uh, Mr. Hyde, uh, which is interesting. So they go through and they go to try to save the crewmen as monsters. And they've only got like 30 minutes to get them out. And they go through, you know... All this garbledy goo, they're battling him and trying to save him. And um, Troy and Jordy are monitoring them and all that kind of good garbage. So um, Troy snaps out of it. Uh, Data uh, ends up uh, helping them escape. He plugs into the computer so they can get some of the crewmen out and all that kind of good jazz. And uh, then uh, they realize that uh, the other crewmen that are in there have been basically brainwashed into a mob with pitchforks and uh, torches, right? So then in issue number three, they, uh, they're they trying to escape the mob and all that kind of stuff, and the other characters are still in their, their, their monster mode, and uh, they put the Enterprise on quarantine, and a shuttle picks up the uh, message, and Scotty ends up uh, beaming in to help out, but he really doesn't, and I like the inclusion of him because he dealt with this monster back in the day, but the problem is he doesn't really do anything in the comics. Uh, he's like, well, I'm here to help, and I can't go in and become a banshee or anything, but I can definitely help from out here, but he really doesn't do anything, and then they go back in again as monsters, and I like the Guinan ghost. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the team goes in, they battle, they do their thing, and um, they're trying to figure it all out, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's a really long read, and uh, at the end of this issue, we get Armus comes back. <laughs> but it's not actually Armus, it's a simulated Armus, is what it is. And then in the fourth issue, they, you know, they're battling him. Uh, and they figure out, hey, this is a fake Armus, and all this kind of jazz, and they're going through, and they trick um, the the Red Jack character in the Sim, Sim Armus, they call him, simulated Armus, Sim Armus. They trick him to the bridge, and he's like, well, I'm just going to take over everything, and you guys are going to be all afraid, and they're, they're trying to fight him, and all that kind of jazz, and uh, essentially... They use some kind of techno babble scanner thing uh, that they're going to use to map him and turn him back into energy. And uh, Scotty comes out and they realize that uh, since he possessed Scotty back in the day, then they can use Scotty's brain cells uh, to scan and get rid of him and all that stuff. And then they, they have a Halloween party at the end of the comic. And yes, that's the whole thing. Um... Again, I like the concept. I like the idea. Terribly executed. The writer is atrocious. Um, just terrible dialogue. It means things like, I see what you mean. I understand. I know this. Do the, and it was just, it's very bippity poppity boop kind of stuff. And it's just, it's bad. It's a bad, bad, bad dialogue. Story was a good idea. I like them bringing Scotty back in because he dealt with the character prior. 
and they just, I don't know, it's just really, really weak. The artwork itself is pretty bad. Um, would I recommend this comic book series? To be honest, for the story, no. The only thing I would say that this would be any good for pickup is because of the covers. Um, so there are multiple covers that you can pick up in each one. Um, so this is this is the cover that I picked up, which is phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. Uh, this was the alternate cover uh, with Armis and Scotty. And did they have a secondary? No. So those were the two covers that you could have got on issue number four. Uh, issue number three, I went with this one. And I think this is the weakest one, to be honest. Um, but the alternate cover for this one was... Uh, there were two alternate covers. Well, no, it was one alternate cover. It was uh, Picard and Beverly. And it just... If that was painted, maybe, and he was the Phantom of the Opera, and the character's not even in the, the comic series. So I went with the Borg, um, Jack the Ripper. I thought that was the better of the two. This one might be my favorite. I can't decide, to be honest, which of these two I liked better. Uh, but uh, I loved the Riker turning into the wolf. I thought that was amazing. And the alternate cover to this one was Troy, Mummy, Data Frankenstein, and Riker Wolf coming out of the holodeck. Um, so I had to go with this one, definitely. And then the first issue, I went with this one with uh, Medusa. Again, she's not even in it, but uh, uh, with this ah, Troy. <laughs> very, very funny. And then her alternate cover was... Um, this one, where they're coming out of the holodeck, Picard and Troy. So, again, I think this was the better of the covers um, to pick out of that. And, like I said, I think I think the Riker cover is probably my favorite. I don't know. That or, or number four. The War for Riker. Both of those are great. So, if you're going to pick these up, I would pick them up strictly for the covers. Find the nice, pretty covers. Uh, bag them. Hang them on a wall or something. Uh, because the story is really kind of... Meh. So, yeah. Um, between them, the stories, the Marvel Zombies, definitely a much better read than the Star Trek Halloween. I like the concept of the Halloween, but uh, the writing just really killed it. I could, even if the writing was good, if the writing was good, I could have dealt with it. Because I like the concept, I like the story idea, but the writer botched it with the dialogue for sure. So, there it is. This week's comic review. If you'd like to see more reviews of comic books, definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Remember, for every 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to give you, the fans, a chance to win a free action figure. And as always, look for more videos in the future. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Be sure to click all the things, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell for new videos. And follow me on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below.